Say, say, kids, what time is it? PDR Tool, tool, tool Time. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Toledo. Listen, we're going to talk about a pretty cool topic today. I'm sure by now everyone's heard about the flat bars, or Daniel Grom calls them the swords. I'm here with Daniel Grom and John Hiley. Vince couldn't make it. We are recording it on a Sunday, and he has mass to make it. Probably didn't even really need to say that, but just want to let you know, Vince is actually a good guy. He goes to church. <laughs> All right, guys. Here we go, man. Let's see. I hit that twice, but, you know, who cares? We're doing this raw dog as... If you look that up in the in the Urban Dictionary, as John Hiley says, you'll find all kinds of terms for the raw dog. So I don't even, I don't even want to ask. What's up, John? Oh, what, what's up? What's up, Daniel? How are you, man? What's You're up, looking what's good. Up, what's up? What's up? How you guys doing? Good, man. Doing good. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm going at it full fledged raw dog here. No mic, no nothing. I know. Uh, I know. We we just wanted. I called you to see if we can test the Skype because we're having some Skype problems. But hey, we were able to get it solved. But might as well just jump, put you on. You know. Yeah. Might as well. Might as well. Sounds sound good enough. Man. Sound good enough. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I got the voice of an angel. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> How was your week, Mike? Um, you know what? Not bad. Not bad. Uh, got my hair cut today and did some other things. But you know, last week I um I was so excited. You guys hear me talk about cold, cold glue all the time, but I was so excited for this. Um, went to this lady's house. Someone backed into her car, and they had a big dent. Now, naturally, I used the cola fria, and I took it out. Oh yeah, I saw, I saw that you posted that, and that. No, that the, wasn't the dent. That was the the, the one I post. That one I posted to you. That's what I'm getting to. Was the one out of good heart. You know, she had another car, beat up car, like 1994. She drives it every day. She loves it. Like you said, man, you saw some people's, you know, tr- you know. Like their coat's peeling. Yeah, exactly what it looked like. And she tells me about that car. She loves it and loves it, you know. And I look over there. There's a giant three and a half foot dent in the quarter panel. And I go, you know what, ma'am? Do you mind if I go take that dent out for you? And she kind of like looked at me like, what are you talking, what? You're going to go take that den out for me? What are you going to charge me? I said, no, I'm not going to charge you anything. I'm just going to go over there. If you don't mind me filming it, I'm just going to film it. And I took it, took the cola free, and I yanked, <laughs> I yanked all of the dent except maybe one little silver dollar size dent on there. And it went from three and a half foot to about two inches. It made me feel good. She was happy as heck. It was a win-win situation. I got to record it which nice. will be on denttrainer.com, guys. Don't forget to go to denttrainer.com. You see a bunch of stuff. We just added Hotbox tutorial on there. And um, anyways, that's one of my stories I had, and it was a feel-good story, you know? That's good. That gives you good karma. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Hey, yeah, what you put out is what you get karma. back. They say 10 times fold either way. So, right. you know, be prepared about that. John, you're Absolutely. scraping your beard, and I can hear it against your mic, so sorry, dude. Oh, <laughs> It's a. <laughs> in case anybody wants to know what he's itching, he's thinking. he's grabbing that beard, man. That's how he thinks. <laughs> so, I work. Now that's that. You know that reminds. Me that this week I had a I had a guy come in and he had a um, convertible, a little uh, Mercedes convertible, and it had a dent on the edge um, of the convertible top, and so I I said, yeah, I've got the perfect tool. I got the edgy tool for that, right? And, um, and he goes, well, the, the roof every seven minutes will start to go back. So, cause I had to have it open like part, not part way down, you know, kind of in mid suspension of, of, if, if you will. And so he gets in the car and he even brings along an egg timer <laughs> so he can time himself. So he was totally prepared for this. So I ended up using the edge jack and it worked great on this thing. I mean, it, it worked really good. And I hadn't, um, he was stoked in that part, but they had some other dents on that thing and um, on the roof. And so I didn't need him to be in the car anymore. Um, and, but he grabs his lawn chair out and he parks it right in the back of the car and sits there to watch me. Shut up, dude. And I'm like. In the back of the car? Yeah. 
in my in my shop and I'm like, you know, it's nice and warm inside. You can go inside. There's free coffee and and he's, no, I'm good here. <laughs> and I'm like, great. And it's it's fine. I I usually don't mind people watching me, but if you're working I mean, on a nice car and you start hammering on it, you do feel subconscious. Do you guys? Well, I do. I do in a way, but not not to where I feel pressure. But I would. I just don't get it that people don't think the other way. Like, you know what? I might be making this guy more nervous by me standing over his shoulder. That's the part I just. It kind of irritates me. It doesn't irritate me. He wants to watch me. If he said, "Hey, can you mind if I watch you?" Dude, well, by you, all my means, go for it. But don't expect me to say it's okay to you to watch it. It just feels like it's it's not proper etiquette for a customer to feel that they're entitled to watch you over their shoulder because probably more than half the techs feel nervous doing that. So that's well, my take. Know, and, and it's also hard to sneak the drill out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, well, oh, or the sandpaper. You, you know. <laughs> You got to do the old camo cough when you're drilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. No, you just but, gotta, you just like, gotta like do the James telling, Bond. Like dude. I was telling Daniel earlier, I was like, you know, we were kind of chatting about this a little bit before the show started, and I was like, you just slip out a fart. <laughs> I mean, you just get a real stinky, you know, a hot fart, and you you slip it out, <laughs> and uh, I mean that 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 will eliminate all problems. And 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 then it's it's funny, guys. So we start talking about it, right? And, and um, I asked these guys. If they've ever had to take a crap at somebody's house when they were out doing mobile repair, it's <laughs> happened to me one time. And I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever had that happen, but it is the craziest, most uncomfortable situation. Well, number one, you got to knock on their door or whatever, you know, if they're inside and you got to say, Hey, you know, can I uh, <laughs> use your restroom? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously you're trying to, you're trying to pull it off like you're, you just got to go in there and, you know, take a leak or something like that. Right. And then you got to get in there. And I mean, you got to go. Balls <laughs> dude, to I could see dumb and dumber, dude, right you're there. To, <laughs> yeah. Because you're trying to make the time, you know, seem like it's much uh, faster. Well, I do that. And I come out and I'm not kidding you. This guy is two foot away from the door. Like he's walking by the hallway as I'm, as I'm coming out of the uh, door. And we both just looked at each other and it was, uh, it wasn't too bad. At least it was a dude, you know? <laughs> I mean, at least it was a dude. Yeah. And um, a second thing, I'll tell you guys one thing that happened to me one time when I was on the road. This wasn't last week, but I show up at this lady's door at the end of the day to uh, get, you know, give her the bill for the repair that I just did. And her Labrador jumps up on me and I feel something wet going down my leg. This dog is peeing on my crotch. No. So, what? Yeah. So he, no he jumps up on me. He's about as tall as me. You know, he jumps up on me, puts his arms on my what shoulders. Was it a Mastiff? No, it was a, a Labrador. Oh, yeah, Labrador. It was a Labrador. Sorry. That's right. And yeah. he just takes a leak all the way down my pants. So it's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> luckily, it's the last job of the day. She was horrified. Okay. So I go home and. Um, Did you I, get a big tip? <laughs> I hope so. Actually, I, I don't even remember. But I go home and I throw my pants on the floor, right? Because I'm jumping in to get a shower. I look over. I got a other. I got a miniature schnauzer back then, a boy miniature schnauzer. I look over and he has taken a yeah. leak on my pants <laughs> that are on the floor. So he smells the smell. He's like, I'm marking my territory right here and there. But dude. anyhow, yeah, just some funny stories. You can't there. win. <laughs> cool. Funny. Well, yeah. all right. Well, let's get into what we were going to talk about. I'm sure these people are like peeing and, you know, farting. And <laughs> so we're, we're going to hey. talk, uh, we're going to have dueling swords here, right? Is that right? Dueling swords compared to, yeah, flat bars. That's what we're, we're going to talk bars. about. Yeah. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, dent gears. So, so uh, how, how many Anaconda. flat bars do you guys have? I have, I think five. I think I have. Let me see. Look out of here. I think I got one, two, three. I got five out of five out of the six, six uh, tools right here that you have listed. Which we is, there's Dent Gear, Anaconda, Ultra, Dent Dial, A1, PDR Finesse. So those are the ones we're actually going to talk about. Did we lose John? Uh, I think we did. All right. Now he might be coming back on here. Yeah, I'm on with you. you Can are. you hear me? Yeah. 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 So I, I heard you guys' questions there. It was kind of breaking up a little bit, but I do have uh, two flat. Actually, I got three. I've got an old school flat bar that just has the regular bullet tip on the end. 
was with my very first toolkit, and um, I, I rarely used it. You know, and then I, I got a hold of, uh, gosh, the Anaconda, and I do have the Dent Dial Heavy Duty. Which one, so, the twenty, the twenty-two or the thirty-five? I got the massive one. I got the thirty-five <clears throat> inch he- heavy. Uh, I, yeah, I got the heavy. Um, what it was, I won it in this contest that Sal was holding. He has this um, video uh, site on Facebook where he rates videos. And one of my old repairs happened to be a high ranking video and he actually gave one to me and he gave one to Jason, uh, Paramount, uh, right about the same time. Cool. All yes. right. But cool. it is the beast. Okay. Cool. Well, um, the tool that I go to and gravitate the most is a tool I don't see on ultra's website anymore. I don't think he makes it, but it's a standard flat bar and, yeah, you know, the key to I think a flat bar is bending it correctly, and bending it to your style and and getting it to do what you want. And I put a a, a pretty severe uh, curve on the very tip, and then I bent towards the hand. I gave it a nice curve, and then towards the handle, I bent it the opposite way. And where I use this tool the most is down the door on a body line, especially on a Honda Accord or a Honda Civic. Where it has a lot of room in it. it well, yeah. And and it's, it's it's a little bit of a struggle getting that down the window a little bit. But if you can get past that top brace, then it, then you got room. But to me, working that body line, a bar works extremely well for pushing out that line. Um, and that's where I like it. Well, um, because you're not, because you, the, the bar itself is going to give you stability on there and you're not you're not gonna you know slip or snail trail usually a dent yeah who's getting hail someone's getting an alarm for hail did you hear that yeah (laughs) it's hailing somewhere i got a bunch of you know what sorry guys it's coming from my ipad i don't know how it came through so um i'll just let you guys anybody know want to know it's an arkansas is getting nailed right now it's been getting nailed all day nice so i'm going back off right on track here um yeah. So, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't use the flat bar as much as I should down the window because I feel like I, to me personally, I feel like I'm going to break the window sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. So I stay safe and I stay true to my, my tool rods. Now that's just, that's just the way I am. But, uh, Ben, who I trained two years ago, he loves the flat bars down the windows, like you mentioned, Daniel. And he yeah. says it, it just throws those body lines out real quick for him. So, um, out of those those things, John, which ones? What, so you 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 have the anaconda and the the dent dial. So the anaconda is much more shorter than the thirty five light. I mean, do you, how often do you use that? Well, I'll tell you, um, I use the thirty five quite a bit on truck bed sides. Um, use them to realign edges, and then um, also had a lot of luck recently using it to push through double panel. Um, so like rear quarter panels, especially the newer Camaros. Uh, you can really leverage them flat bars, especially that big 35 uh, uh, heavy-duty uh, dent dial. Mm-hmm. I mean, that thing, you bend it, and it does ne- it never bends out of shape. It can leverage off the tires very well. Um, as far as the Anaconda, we just used it last week, um, another dent trainer tutorial uh, that we actually put on, on the black rubber ball on the end of it. And he used it to repair that dent. If any of you guys are part of our Facebook page or your hand and just crunched in that whole fender, well, we pulled a lot of that out with the cold glue. And then he finished nearly the whole thing with the anaconda and that little, one of them little black rubber ball tips from Keith Constantino, uh, the black, black plague PDR, uh, little rubber balls. Really nice. They're actually, I think they have copper on the inside of them. So they got a lot of drive to them. And he literally went through that whole fender. And the cool thing I want you guys to visualize about flat bars on fenders is that they don't slip because you can lay them up against the tire. So you don't get that slippery right. slope that you would get uh, using a rod. Yeah. That's now, what me I just being old school. Yeah, and me just being old school, I always grab the rod. Sometimes I do things that I don't even know why I do them. 
you know, I know that a flat bar would probably, you know, work better in a situation, but because I'm in the habit of doing it some other way, I just continuously do the same thing over and over again, you know? So, yeah, but, um, that's just me. Well, you know, out of, you know, I, I've, I'll tell you what, I, what I like about the flat bars is exactly what you just said, John is, is I like it because it stays flat and straight and balanced on the dent. So no matter how much drive you're throwing at it, you're not going to slip like you would a bar because if you, a rod, if you, if you just slightly turn it to the left or right and unconsciously don't realize it, you snail trail right then and there, <laughs> you know, well, especially right. if you're using a plastic tip, if you're using a plastic tip, like a sharp tip, uh, you, you're Ooh. done, you're done though. So, um, yeah, that's why I like, I like to use the fenders. I use the 22 light a lot on the fenders, which is, um, dent dial, which is Sal's. And I also use the Anaconda. So and now, I, I just, I just got the Anaconda and, um, one of the things that I didn't like was that he has it. He has the thread is, is some Russian thread or some different thread, uh, thing. So I actually retapped it. I just took a five sixteenth, eighteenth thread tap and I retapped it and it tapped really easy. And so I could put all my other regular tips into it. So I bypassed his whole little adapter thing. Yeah. I think he right. realizes that. I think he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's understanding that I need to, yeah. Make make an American or you know the North American standard one for for those guys. But, but the other thing I don't like is he has all these great tips, but they they slide into an adapter with a set screw, and he has some that are like um, kind of like butterfly tips or, or mushroom type tips that are flat, but you can't twist that tip at all. It'll just it'll just turn on that set screw it just doesn't it's not strong enough and i really wish he would change that to make it a thread with a nut on it and it would work great if he did that yeah i think that's what he's he's planning on doing i talked to yeah him we talked probably. to him at mte <clears throat> no we didn't see it we didn't talk to him we talked to him as his interpreter in, yeah. yeah well he wasn't there at all but you know his guys are selling it for him i i'll tell you something uh Oh, sorry, Mike. I was just go off that subject of the anaconda. Try that big rubber round tip and try that as a knockdown, Daniel. I mean, that thing, it has something where it like vibrates the whole panel when you're hitting with it. And it like literally, I've watched crowns just shake out of the panel when you're hitting with that thing. So I take his metal like rods and I kind of extend them out and make them my own metal uh, length knockdown for it. And it's that bigger rubber plug, man. And I'll tell you, you hit not the big wide one, but the second, yeah. the second biggest one. Yeah. And no, that, his, that his tips are great. Being crown yeah. killer. His tips are really well, good. That, yeah. that big rubber heel thing, I, I use that on a bunch of different tools. That thing, yeah, that thing is killer. I, yeah, yeah he updated really he, well he made it. He made it look all pretty now. Yeah, it works great off of a tire, you know, and, and you can use that on any of the other tools i'll tell you right off the bat what i like and i'll tell you what i like about the which i know daniel you agree and then you disagree and 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 john you feel free to chime in what you like and what you don't like but here's here's what if ever, here's what people ask me all the time and i'm gonna i'm gonna make it clear right now so people can be kind of decide for themselves number one before i say what's the difference between anything if I asked you personally, you guys, what rod should I buy? What are you going to tell me? You're all gonna, of them. Yeah. You're going to tell me buy them all. Yeah. Buy, or buy what you think is going to help you the most through your repairs. Every, every, and I don't mind people asking me, but I'd like to tell this in the masses. Should I buy the Anaconda? Should I buy the Dent Dial? Should I buy, you know, PDR Finesses? Which one should I buy? All of them have their purpose. The difference, and yeah, and they're different. They are different. And as much as, and we all, we all know Sal, as much as Sal defends his dent dial, it's, it, it doesn't, it's not an all savior tool. I mean, the difference between, I'll tell you what I like about Sal, Sal's, you can bend it. Um, you can do all kinds of different things to it. You, it, the more, I guess you can be creative, the more you can 
get use out of it. What I don't like about styles is that the setup time, I, it kills me sometimes when I have to think about how I'm going to set it up and yada, yada compared to the Anaconda or the rest of them where they have a sled that goes right over it and you just put, pick the tools and adapters you want. And there you go. You're set. Now the Anaconda yeah. is stationary. I mean, it's, it, it's stiff as hell and it's not going to bend, oh, yeah. but that doesn't, it, it, that doesn't bother me. I know that bothers you, Daniel. I don't know if it bothers you, uh, John, but for me, I just use, I just, okay, I know this is going to be an Anaconda, you know, situation. So I'm expected, I already know, or this, you know what, I'm going to need more bend. Okay. I've already got my dent dial set up to that bend. Cause I have different dent dials and like the 25 or 22 heavy. I have it bent two different ways and that's it. I don't try to bend it anymore because that thing is way hard to try to bend anywhere else. If you're out in the middle what, of nowhere. Now what's the difference between the heavy and and regular I the guess. thickness and and the stout in this i mean mm -hmm. but they're i mean bendable. the 22 light is hard is pretty decently hard to bend in the first place the 22 heavy good luck i mean you're gonna bend it but you i'm 225 but pounds and i'm you, leaning you all bend, the way you down have to bend it in a tool bender is what you're saying yeah yeah you Dude, you me tell you me no you me tell you guys how i was able to bend that thing it was wild i had to take out this drain cap in the middle of my shop where i've got like a literally if this thing would have felt gone, I mean, I don't even know how deep this drain is in the middle of my shop. So I went in there, right, and I hook a, um, take one of them rope ratchets we all have, you know, and I tie it to my belt, and then I run it through the end of the anaconda, and I had to take all my weight and karate kick that thing, like, <laughs> like, like just leverage my foot on it and just kick it and kick it and kick it until eventually it started to give way, and I was able to put, like, I pull it out after, like, a couple minutes, and it's got a little bend in it. But little by little, it started giving away. Then I flipped it upside down. I mean, it's a a freaking chore to yeah. bend that. <clears throat> well, big if you had one, I mean, it if, really is. If you had a MPDR vice setup, you would have something <laughs> definitely <laughs> too. Because Daniel, you got you got a peg right already. Yeah, I mean, obviously you got a tool bender right on it, and it's 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 handy. Yeah, really handy. But um, if you buy you should you should buy um, uh, Ultra has a tool bender that fits into your uh, receiver of your truck, but I take that out and I put it in my vice grip, uh, my, my, uh, bench vice. And uh, uh, yeah. Got yeah. It. Now, now guys explain to me, because is that something different than the Harbor freight one? Because I, I couldn't even imagine, I don't even think the dent dial would fit, uh, in the tool rod bender at Harbor freight. I mean, is it, is it set up a little oh, bit yeah, different? No, no. All it is, is it's two, two pegs, pokes, yeah. two pegs. Okay. That okay. Okay. Better. Uh, time, kind of an angle from each other and you just slip it in there and you can it, it's great okay. I use it I yeah use it you had day. me you had me thinking about like one of them one tool benders you know they actually sell them at harbor freight i don't know if uh you guys knew that now, but you're talking uh, a rod it's, bender it's a pipe bender isn't it is yeah it? yeah it's a yeah. pipe bender but it's got a big long handle and you can slide pipe and, and you know it's how the original handles were yeah, you know, we were discussing that earlier today. The yeah. original um, S looking handles, you know, yeah. they're just rod that's been put in a lathe, and then they take it and they bend it and they temper it, and then they dip the handles. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that was the old old school way of doing things. Now, do you guys? Um, my one of my other favorite uh, flat bars is uh, Dent Gears uh, Devil Tip. Have you guys used that tool? I do have it. I haven't used it a lot though, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yes. As a matter of fact, we have it up here in our show notes, guys. So if you guys want to say exactly what we're talking about. So Dent Gear sells a flat bar upper fender tool uh, called the Devil Tip. And where that tool works really well is on front fenders of, of cars. And you're trying to get that body line uh, right on the edge of the, of the fender. Uh, where the wheel is and it works extremely well um i use that tool quite a bit actually now debt pdr finesse has a rod that's kind of like that like a, i have one of yeah. those it's a double bend and uh, it's a rod like that kind of comes through there um 
It's a specialty yeah. tool for sure. Uh, my, I, I'll be honest, nothing against any of these these bars like that. It's just I feel like it's too much power for the for the the cars that we use on right now because it just tweaks the crap out of the fenders, man. It just over pushes it. So, but with your clamp thing that you introduced me to, that's that might come in handy now. So, well, you know, the devil tip is a remake of an old dent wizard tool. So um, it's basically Dent Wizard had that um, flat bar that came down into the edge of the fenders a long, long time ago. I mean, I've seen that um, a buddy of mine, Daryl Janowski, he's probably going to listen to this. Uh, he actually came and showed me from his old Dent Wizard set back in, I want to say, 2004. And that tool at that time was probably five or six years old. So, uh, on, You know what, John? Hold on a second. Yeah. If you guys, any of you guys can let us know if anyone has a complete set, an original complete set of Dent Wizard tools and can post them, we will give you a PDR Tool Time t-shirt. I want to see, I want to see original photos or a video of your tools, of your original Dent Wizard tools. I don't know if you get in trouble or not, but you shouldn't, but Hey, 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 this is a contest. Whoever gives the best photo gets the t There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. The best high-quality photos of the Dent Wizard set. Most complete and high-quality yep. photos. So. And you, you see what I was envisioning there, Mike. I was just envisioning like 500 Dent Wizard techs getting on our uh, thing and posting photos, saying, now where's my yeah. T-shirt? Well, this is where Vince comes in because he's an ex-Dent Wiz guy, dude, and this guy uses all old ex-Dent Wizard tools. We might end up getting Vince one. <laughs> <laughs> Vince, had, but I don't think Vince has a complete set. So, um, but anyways, but yeah, I would like mm-hmm. to see that. But speaking of Dent Wizard, um, does now, anybody? Let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask you guys a quick question. Do you guys know who manufactures the Dent Wizard tools now? No. Uh, does Does anybody have an idea? Okay, we're we're in the dark on that one. Okay, I, I just wondered because you know I, it, it almost looks I knew like the A1. I mean, a lot of them look like A1. I yeah. knew the maker back uh in the early 90s i knew who was making their tools um that was like 90 95 96 was maybe. adventure ever made no adventure wasn't making their tools right? they're making their knockdowns right i think, I think. now here, here's something interesting guys about uh dent wizard is that um i'm not going to say what company but i know of a tool company who sent a bag of tools there to their corporate headquarters with a guy who was high up in the ranks at the time he brings them into dent wizard to give them the tools just to test them and try them out a free set they would not take them they said we will not even you need to get these all off of our property because we don't want anything to do with them so whoever is making their tools has that on lockdown Mm. (laughs) so nonetheless interesting story interesting story there well it just shows you like not just you know if you talk speak to any ex dent wizard tech how dedicated they are and that are how how shall i say um you know i wouldn't say married to their tools but but they are just you, you can't get them away from them you know they'll swear up and down about a certain tool you know and right. there's certain tool like vince he he loves this straight tool that's they they kind of i think they call it the johnson okay and it's got a nylon tip on the end of it and dude, mm-hmm. he and if he compares every tool to that if it's not just as stiff or stiffer than that, it's junk. <laughs> you, you don't want it. Right. You know, so, but, but anyways, it's, it's, we're, we're going to stay on track here, but yeah, we need, definitely need to talk about the dent wizard tools back and uh, later on a segment, especially when somebody gives us and wins that contest, we'll bring them on and find out how we got them and yada, yada. So, or woman. There we go. So there if you guys go. are on the listening to this, let's send it into PDR tool time at gmail.com. And um, or post them on our Facebook page at the PDR yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, Full time revolution, yeah, yeah, go to the Facebook page, yeah, yo, we need some, we need some more revolutionaries out there. And while we're talking about it, while we're talking about our revolutionaries out there that are following this podcast, please write us a review, we would love it. Just um, get on our podcast page, write us a review. And uh, who, who wrote us a review recently? Is that Troy Brewer? Yeah, Troy Brewer and yeah, Troy. another guy, and. Let's just say, yeah, well, let, me, let me go. Uh, let me. It was okay. like Dent TBN or something like that. So it didn't even really give his first names. So put your first name on there. And guys, we're going to look through all, all of our reviews and we're going to announce the people who write us a review. Um, we just greatly appreciate 
appreciate that. It helps us get our rankings up on iTunes. It helps um, people find us in the search in iTunes. So now, yeah, we love cool. you. We love you for it. We love you long time for it. Now, for the biggest bang for your buck, I think uh, A1's got everybody outsold because they sell their tool for thirty dollars, <laughs> and I don't think you Why? can beat that price. Why do they sell it so cheap? Just curious. Uh, I have no idea, but that's the the cheapest. Thirty nine dollars, thirty nine ninety nine, or thirty nine dollars, yeah. right? That's yeah, what I see. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, if you want to. If you don't have one in your uh, in your tool now, card, hey, hold on a second. Let's let's go back here. Now, now I'm noticing here. Now the difference between can we need to tell everybody the difference between these tools that we're talking about is some of them are just straight flat bars. They don't have a sled on them, so right. they're just talking that. Let's just get, name them. The A1 flat bar is just a flat bar. The PDR finesse ones we we're talking about. Oh, the PDR finesse oh, one does have yeah. one. He, no, he, he he's got a sled, but he, so does Ultra. No, no, yeah, Ultra yeah, no. Makes so, a sled I'm, too. I'm, yeah, and that's why I'm at the correction because we've got I've got a heavy one that PDR Fenness made. It's freaking awesome. I like it. I've never tried that one, dude. It's it's mammoth. You talk about a sword. It looks like a sword. I mean, and it, it looks like he's got some pretty interesting um, accessories yeah. too. Yeah, the the finesse is a legit man. It's legit. I mean, if you know what? For how much how they make them by hand and most of that, I got to give it to them. They're pretty damn good. You know? Yeah, I love all of his tools. A1 flat bar, it's just a flat bar. The Dent Dell's got its own sled. Ultra's got one with a sled and without a sled. Anaconda's got a sled. And Dent Gear is just a flat bar. They don't, I don't, not that I know of that they have a sled. They might, but I don't see it here. Um, they have, they do have a fulcrum though, which is pretty cool. I, it ha I have used it, and the fulcrum for Dent Gear is pretty dang impressive. I like it. Works really good. So. Yeah. In case you guys don't know what a fulcrum is, it's the point where you can gain, you can get leverage off when you're pushing on a dent and you need a little bit more um, leverage. And that will fulcrum either off the tire or wherever the, the area that you're trying to pivot from uh, to get or, leverage. Or you use the, the fulcrum as your tip of your tool and you uh, use the tip of the tool as the leverage point. Yeah. Like on a dent dial or the anaconda. Yeah, I, you got to jump highly because I see your wife giving you dollar signs over there, man. <laughs> she, she, no, uh, no, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> all right, good, good. No, no, we no, know how I'm the wifey good. is, dude. So we yeah, all she know was how. Just telling me that she was going up. Okay, all right. But here, let me give you a situation that yeah. I had a uh, Sprinter van come in and it come on a, the show, and it had a dent in the um, in the slider door, and I popped off the door panel and. It was a perfect situation for the anaconda or the dent dial where you put that sled on and you put the tip on the sled and then you're let and then you put a um, a foot on yeah. the tip of the tool yeah and you're using that center point as as your tip and it was the perfect tool for that situation and there's nothing better. Well, I tell you, I, I pays for it. I tell you my favorite places that I like using it for. I mean, you you just mentioned you like going down the windows on it. There's, I think, two major places I like using it for. Um, that I use it more common than I do anywhere else. I, I use it for the Toyota Tundra truck beds, where you get that common dent mm -hmm. near the tail light, across that body line, that curve, which is dreadful <laughs> to push out. And going all the way up the bed, there's an you, if you take out the tail light, you're you you have like this thin maybe a half inch room, and you can't get a tool in there to push hard enough to get that that dent out. So you bend your you have either your anaconda or your 35 heavy or light um, dent dial, and you set up your fulcrum or you set up your point where you need to push it. Actually, we have some of that on Dent Trainer right now too, uh, John with that with that tundra anyways man you can yeah. you can throw that dent so good so fast because if you try to use a rod good luck you're not going to be able to push even if you could glue pull it you're not going to you're not going to get that body line out clean especially if you have a deep crease going across the body line on that truck bit on that curve so that's one area right, I use, right. and i really use it for the front fenders if i got an f-150 Oh, in the corner of the beds of an F-150. 
oh my gosh, those things are a nightmare. Really a nightmare. There's no way you can do it without a flat bar. No way. Not going to happen. You, you know, and the, th the thing that you say, saying, Mike and Daniel there, that I think we need to stress to the audience is that center push power is insane. Yeah. So when you have the top of the tool. You're not pushing, uh, you're leather, pulling sometimes. Right. You're pulling it sometimes. But when you have that top of the tool against something and you're using the center of a bar to push, I mean, sometimes if you get yourself set up right, I mean, you, you got to be careful. I mean, it's massive amounts of power in that push. And I, I just think that's really where the Falcrum style bars come in great. And just to add a little bit to this, um, the Anaconda, what I love about it is that you can attach the tools to the top side. Uh, you can slip them into places like fenders rather quick. Um, again, like Mike said, the, uh, the dent dial, um, it actually, it's awful wide because the nuts that go all the way through it go all the way through to the back. So when you're trying to slip it into a fender or something like that, it's really hard to get past all the plastic and all that kind of stuff. I want you guys to envision here about the center pressure of a flat bar is that um, th there's nothing like it. I mean, when you're pushing with the center of a flat bar and you've got the top of that thing up inside a bed and you're grabbing the bottom of that thing and your fulcrum point or your push point is in the center, there is nothing more power powerful than that. Um, now, going back to the Anaconda versus the dent dial, the dent dial definitely bendable is awesome because some sometimes you can't use the Anaconda. Sometimes the bend that it comes with just doesn't work. And other times you can slip it right in. You can get it in there fast. You can use it quick. But sometimes you need the bendable part of the, uh, the dent dial. And when you do bend that thing out and you get it set up right, I mean, it's going to have massive amounts of power. But here's the deal. You put a thread through it, and that thread goes all the way through the sled, all the way through the back. So you're not going to be slipping that thing into anywhere. So you're going to be doing some R&I if you're going to be going up into a fender with it. Um, me, I've been able to, I don't know if you guys, I, I try to finagle everything without doing R and I, I mean, I, I will, <laughs> will jump through the, I mean, the hoops of hell to get away without doing something, without R and I. So something. you have some sharp drill and, bits. Uh, then. That happened. Uh, yeah, well, no, 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 I'm <laughs> slick, man. You know what I mean? I can find ways, but you, you know, and, and I actually got a guy who does, uh, Alan, you know, I talk about Alan in my shows. He is the mad R&I man. I mean, he literally, that dude, I could tell him to take a door off, and he'd be, in five minutes, he'd have it hanging on his shoulder with the glass removed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, like I, I, I'm, uh, I, I literally, I've had an R&I guy with me for at least five years. Yeah, That's yeah, nice. yeah. I, I, you know? I, I got so to too. I, I have to be that. honest with you. Uh, I, I do too. But, I hate, I hate R and I too, man. So, but, but I do it, but I don't like it. So, I always but break isn't that something. where the dent dial gets you on the front fenders? I mean, isn't that where the dent dial slows you down on the front fenders? I mean, that's where it usually gets me. What you mean, trying to pull that splash guard out and things like that, trying to get it through there? Yeah. 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 Gosh, the last thing you want to do is pull out a splash guard. Yeah, well, I mean, getting, sometimes you got to pull the wheel off. I'm getting good at cutting those things like really nice, so they don't notice. You know, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, okay, here, here, let, let's let's go over. Daniel, I want you to go one neg negativity about the anaconda, and one negativity about the thing, or not, one negativity about anaconda, and one positive thing about the anaconda. Go. Uh. Well, I already mentioned the the do it again. If that's what that's the, the threads, you know, having not having that not universal five sixteen eighteen thread. Um, the the great thing is that honestly, that heel in that set of tools is so valuable to use elsewhere. Uh -huh. I absolutely love that, and that it's so stiff, and that it, it's so strong. So when you need something that's the super strong it's it's the tool to go to and um i just i just like that heel that heel and that tool i would have just if i could just have bought that and used it on all my other tools i would have john you have both ultra and i'm not ultra uh the anaconda and the dent dial oh you didn't tell me your, I, you I didn't tell you didn't uh, tell me about uh, your dent dial what you like and what you don't like um, dent dial uh his sled is two pieces and uh, that, that's good or bad. It's bad. Okay. Um, you know, it's sometimes it's 
you're fumbling with it, trying to get it on. Um, and honestly, I, I, I wish Sal would make his tools pretty because all my other tools are look good and, and he doesn't, he, I think he wears that as a badge of honor. Of, they actually uh, do, don't look too bad when you first get them. You just have to keep them up. You know what I mean? No, uh, he doesn't polish. Yeah, you know, everybody else's tools are all polished and, and look really nice. And Picky bastard. You guys <laughs> should see mine. <laughs> John, what's your, what's yours, your take on the Anaconda and the, uh, the dent dial, good and bad? Or I didn't say good and bad. What's your? Well, you, they're, I mean, they're not. It's more totally completely well, good than it is. Yeah, it's the good thing about the dent. Look, look, it's bendable. You know, it's bendable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to go with um, uh, Daniel on that one. Well, I, I also like the dent dial tips. I mean, he, he has some unique tips. You know, he's got them leather sled tips, things like that. Uh, but like he said as well, the finish on it, um, I, I don't mind it because I'm like one of them people who you guys seen my glue gun, you know, you guys seen, you guys have seen all my, uh, old, old stuff. That's all broken apart. I mean, Gene Fetty puts a toolbox up on our, on, on our website the other day and his looks so perfect and so clean gets like 70 likes and I go put <laughs> mine up there and mine is like the most broke down, same toolbox, same model. And I mean, it is just like somebody smashed it and broke it. And, uh, and it's all, everything just le- messy everywhere. And, um, I got like 12 likes or something like that on it. So, you know, look, uh, that Sal's doesn't bother me on the fit and finish, but mine is like a rust bucket at this point. So his dent dial now that I have is like pretty much a rust bucket on my cart, but I still use it. And, um, it gets your hands a little bit dirty whenever you use it now, but it's still a great tool. So love it, love the bendable part, love the part that um, I love his tips that he puts on it. As far as the Anaconda goes, um, I like it as well. I definitely like the Anaconda tips. That they're unique, they're different. You know, it's good to have both of them. You like one of them can't do what other what the other one can do. So it's a beautiful thing. They kind of complement each other. Although Sal would would probably just you know would would rather just never. I mean, you know, it's interesting. Interesting. I'll tell you guys a quick story um, about uh, about Sal. Whenever Ike first came out with his flat bar, I guess uh, I was at the uh, Mobile Tech Expo, and I guess Sal woke up, walked up to his booth with his cell phone camera and started snapping photos of it in front of him. <laughs> started like, uh, you know, like I'm gonna, you know what I mean? Like, hey, we're I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> you know remember. what I mean? Type, I remember like, those. Snap, yeah, no, no. Sal, I'm gonna start snapping Sal would, photos of it. Sal, would, you know how gangsters throw out gangster signs everywhere. Sal would throw yeah, out his, yeah. his throw. Sal would throw out his patent all over the forums. You remember, <laughs> like like it was gang signs right. or something. You better not. You better not. It, it always had the dent dial and like a crazy long yeah. patent number behind yeah. it. You know, yeah. it was like nine zero four eight two nine seven eight. And you know, it was it was legit. And he it was, was smart for doing yeah, it that yeah. way. But you know, um, but you know how much it costs I, I, I to sue somebody. You know how much it costs to really. I mean, it, um, it it probably costs. Right. A minimum of ten thousand dollars to get a lawyer. And probably if you really go through it, you're probably fifty to a hundred thousand to sue somebody. I mean, over that. Um right, anyways, right. let me right. so let you're me, never gonna get I'm not saying I'm not saying it's it, I guess it's what's the value to you to that, to how much is it worth for you to protect it. So I'm not saying it I don't want right. anybody to say, Oh, I'm just gonna copy it then no it's not what i'm trying to say i'm just right. saying it's a lot of money to sue somebody and, um, and, and, and you know don't don't get me wrong because i love both them guys love all the companies that put this stuff together um i'm not a lawyer so i don't know if they infringed on a patent or anything like that i'm sure uh you, you know it's interesting the things that can be patented and then just a little change i mean it's then the patent's out the window you know yeah, so i know i don't know I know I had some talks with these with a lot of big tool makers, and they all tell me the same story. So they're pretty pretty spot on. So I I believe them. Um, my good and bad. Okay, uh, we'll start with the dent dial. The setup time. It just it just sometimes I just I wish I could have it set up just a little faster. I wish Sal would come out with a new sled that you can actually just slide on there and you're good to go. You know. I don't really care about his tips too much. I mean, like as far as like how they look, I think one of the things that he, he actually helped the industry is with leather, you know, publicly showed how he can push dents with leather and not chew up the panels, which I commend him for because that's to me, that was, that was pretty good. So the other thing is what I, and and I like it bends. So I guess I'm supposed to only say one, what I, what, yeah, what I do like about it a lot is it's bendable 
at the same time, it's very strong for being a bendable tool. There's no other tool that I know that you can bend it is like that. And no matter how hard you push on it, it keeps its rigidness. It keeps its form. If you don't want ever want the tool to bend in the middle of a dent, then you're going to step up to as heavy. Um, so I thought that was pretty good. Not to take anything away, PDR Finesse's uh, big sword uh, sled tool is freaking pretty pretty strong too. I would compare it to more of the light version than the heavy, if you guys want to kind of know. Okay, but it it is it does it's pretty stout and it works really good and it's it's an excellent tool for going down the window. Now, now there that tool has like a it looks like a a welded piece on the, the the tail end of that is that used as a tip now see he had two like i and back in the early days about four years ago he sent me three different versions so i don't hmm. see the ones that you're sending me i'm gonna have to put up mine mine's probably a good two inches two and a half inches wide it's wide it's it's big but is there something on the the tail end of that tool. No, was it was just a straight, bubble? it was a straight sword, okay. sword looking with a, with a, um, you know, where you can put a tool on there and his sled was great. It's slid on there. I mean, really, really good and really good. So yeah. I'm going to take some pictures and I'll throw it up there. Actually have my tech take some pictures cause he's got it and, um, he loves it, but those are the good and bad things about it. Um, I think it, you talk about, really getting like john says you know you're really getting all that power from the center and especially if you're doing a quarter panel that with a body line dent those things are paying the butt man you got a dent from the body line and you're trying to push on the quarter panels that thing and you put that against the brace on the inside brace now you're not pushing you're kind of pulling it and you and at the same time you're getting that that drive right on that body line with the right tip now oh, you're oh, those camrys those older camrys that's what i'm talking about those old school cameras would have those little, the body line that goes, it's kind of indented body line, mm -hmm. not going out, but going in. You know how hard it is to straighten a dent out like with that? Yeah. You know, and get it nice and clean. That's, that's, that's a great tool to use it for. So, and, the, and those applications. But yeah, far definitely. as, the, far as these, these tools, I mean, they're, they're good. I mean, should you get, should you get just one? Hell no. Should you get them all? Yes, eventually. And trust <laughs> me, you know. Yeah. If you're going to get two, I wouldn't, my, what I use the most is I use the 22 light of Sal's and I use the Anaconda. Those are the two I use the most. And I have the PDR finesse, but I gave it to my tech to, to have. Otherwise I'd use that one too, just as much. I don't own the flat bar of a one. I own one of ultra, but I don't use it. And the first version he came out was it, to me, it was a little too much. It could bend too much a little bit. So well, I I would tell people just buy the the A one just because it's go down the door. It's thirty nine dollars. Well, yeah, and you can go down Come the on. door with that one easy. Yeah, easy. And, but you have to bend it right. You have to put the right bends on to make that. I thing do right. have I do have the FB twenty two from Dent Dent Gear, and it's pretty nice. It's got the little lip on there that you can go down the window to with it. I'm going to use it more because you guys keep telling me about the body line thing, so I need to use it more down the body lines. So. Actually, I have a I have one that came from somebody's set, and I don't know who it, who actually made it, but it's really really thin. It's like it's really thin, and it's strong as hell. That's PDR finesse, I think. I think this was before PDR finesse had tools. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> well, how? I'm sorry. When did you say? What year? It it's really old. Oh. It's 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 a very old tool. Dent wizard tool. And, uh, it, I. I have no idea. Um, I don't, I'm not even sure where I got it. Maybe but, Lido. But <laughs> you can stick this thing down a Europe, an old European door, um, and and it works great when you have a really tight window, and those other bars are just a little bit too thick. So cool. Okay, uh, so we are we're gonna go into tech tips, guys. Okay, so getting back into it, tech tips. John, you got one, or you want me to come back to you? Da, 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 Go ahead da, and give da, it a tech tip here. Go ahead. Um, something that, that I have been doing lately, and this has been on lower truck beds, I've been using my blending hammers on the back side while I visualize the front side. 
And here's a little tip for that. Put yourself on, um, you know, one of them rubber balls or a soft tip on one end of your blending hammer and then take your heaviest knot down, your heaviest um, tool or your heaviest tip and thread it onto the other side of the blending hammer. And I'm telling you, I have been rocking out dents on lower bed sides really from a hammer technique. Now, it takes a little while to get accurate with it, but I call this technique reverse panel blending. Um, I did a whole tutorial on this uh, in Dent, Dent Trainer. And, uh, you know, people have contacted me and they just love the idea of that because sometimes on bedsides, even if you're using a dent dial, or even if you're using, uh, you know, um, some other form, if you're flipping your tool upside down and pulling it into the bedside, you still can't get your head up to where you need it to be to finish it. And a lot of times if you can hand in there and you can get a hammer back there, you can reverse panel blend uh, them bedsides out. Now, which, what, what vehicle are you typically talking about on that? You know, a lot of, I did one not too long ago on a Ford of the rear bedside. You know how they're kind of, uh, you can't get to them from the taillight area. It's usually, John, it's usually a long bed, right? Yeah. Got, yeah. Yeah. Got a larger area between the, fr the wheel and the cab. The, right. Long, and, a, right. And a lot of times you can sneak your hand into some of these different makes and models. Um, I want to say the last one I did was a uh, Ford. Actually, the last two ones that I've done were Fords. And, uh, like, you can't get in through that pocket where the tail light is, or at least you can't get any rods in there decently. And there's you nothing get a decent sized dent. Either. Yeah, there's I'm telling you, I took, a, uh, I took a round dent. I mean, this thing was the size of a cantaloupe or something like that, and it was going through a body line. Heated the front side of it, visualized it, took that uh, – uh, again, I use that rubber ball that Keith Constantino sells, and I put it on the back of my blending hammer. I think I used a jackhammer, and I just rocked that thing out. And then I actually flipped it to the polish side, and I started doing little definition work. So basically blending from the inside of the panel, taking these little bitty hits and um, visualizing them on the outside of the panel. Cool. Good, good tip. Good tip. I, yeah, add, you know, I, I actually tried the other day is that I was actually lurking on a classic car, the Mercedes. You could, a, a, a 1964 250 and the back and the court, they had a middle between the door and the quarter panel. There's no area where you can get it don't go down. It does convertible, but you took the paneling off and you had this one little slot, but you, it was so down far, you could not get any leverage to it. So I mm -hmm. took an extension tap down really long and i pinged the dents out hitting the hitting the the striking mm -hmm. the 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 tap down from back and hitting it now the only the my advice on that this, this isn't my tech tip but i'm going to kind of sense to follow you up on it i would strongly use heat because because you're kind of shocking the paint when you hit it because you can't control the strike uh, too you much definitely got to use heat yeah because you you'll yeah, crack, you gotta you'll, be careful you'll crack paint so mm -hmm. um but but anyway, since I'm I'm on the subject, John, you have anything else to say on there? You look like you're about to say something, but you good? Oh no no no, that's okay. about it. I, okay. I was I was I was going to say the auto hammer kind of does something similar, but um, you know now, the auto you use, hammer. Do you use that? I use the auto hammer. Yeah yeah yeah. I've um. That's something man, we need you, to talk about more though. On later I on. have um. Well, I got a video, Daniel, where I ripped out about a I think it was a twelve or thirteen inch crease. One swipe got it to was about that the fifteen minute pole. crease. Yeah. Yeah, one swipe with that auto hammer. .com. Yeah, one, one swipe with that auto hammer got it to wholesale quality. I mean, yeah. good enough to give it to a dealer. I mean, you could barely tell it was there. And then I just finished it up with a dent dial and a and a tool. Cool. And and that tool that auto hammer takes it's a skill. It's oh, a learn. Yeah. It's a learned skill yeah. cuz you can overstretch metal so easy. Uh, um, and um yeah, you got to you got to get used okay. to that tool. All right, so listen, over the weekend, you guys know I, I had a wooden hammer made. You know, I, I checked out, uh, I've got, I got hooked on Peter Finesse's wooden hammer. Really love it. Matter of fact, I did a blab. I call it a blab, a, a SoundCloud blab. That's on our PDR tool time, you guys. So if you guys start going on there, pdrtooltime.com, there'll be a section where it says SoundCloud blabs, PDR blabs. And if John or me or somebody has something to say and we can't, we got to get off our chest, uh, you'll see that, that, um, that SoundCloud. It's a, it's a clip about us talking or me talking about that. Anyhow, what I discovered 
is new creating new grips for my hammers for my tools matter of fact i'm going to do it to my shane jacks hammer i think john's going to do it to his but what i'm talking about is for three dollars guys this is what i did i went to the fishing store and i got this k what's it called john k what k flock k flock uh, well yeah i don't know the name of that but actually if you look it up it's heat shrink um yeah. tubing or heat shrink handle tubing yeah uh yeah. and you 3M's got some, but the kind that Mike's talking about is very stylish. It's, uh, it's got a pretty cool look to it. K-Flock. Feel. So, oh, X-Flock. X-Flock, sorry. X-Flock. Um, so I went down to the fishing bait tackle place, got like four inches of that. I took a rope and I kind of spiraled it around the handle about three and, three and a half inches. And I made it finger width apart, like as I spiraled it, spiraled it. Because when I put my hand on it, I want my fingers to fit between it. I put the the heat shrink uh, that that shrink shrink wrap that you have that you see on the fishing poles, and I put the heat gun on it, and it formed it on there perfect. I couldn't believe how well it felt, how just great it made that that handle feel. And now I'm going to do it to all my tools uh, that I need a grip to, and that's my tech tip and I think you guys will be blown away how well it works and on any tool you want a better grip hammer whatever you guys use tool um, I think I think even you'll will probably see it the tool manufacturer is even doing it pretty soon because it works that good and I'm so impressed with it nice yeah I, I you know it's great I've, tip I found some stuff at at the local uh, lumber yard and um, it's made for, uh, for hammers, for, for guys framing, framing hammers, and you actually boil it. Remember, remember your old, uh, mouthpieces yeah, yeah. that you'd boil yeah. and then you bind it to, it's kind of like that material. And you take this thing, you boil it in boiling water, and then you wrap it around your handle. And it has, it has already, it has the finger kind of grip part of it. And, and then you grip it with your hand and you melt it into your personal grip. Uh, the only bad thing is, is it adds some girth to the handle. So if you've got a big handle, it makes it bigger. And I tried it on a, uh, a couple hammers and it just, it wasn't quite right, but for a smaller handle on a hammer, it would work really well. well so I you've think. already tried it. I've, I've tried that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember what it was called. I, I'd say go to your lumber yard and don't worry. We'll post it on the PDR tool time blog. Yeah, we'll you find guys it can check there. it out. Yeah. You'll be able to see it. What your, is that your, is that your tech tip or are you just adding no, to no. what I'm saying? I was just adding to what you're saying. All right. Um, but I, I think yours is, uh, probably a little bit more user friendly and, and would work great. I'm, I, I'm excited to try that one. So, um, I, you know, I, the other day I was making my own, um, window protectors and what i do is i i go to tap plastic and i don't know if a lot of guys back in the east coast have tap plastic but tap plastic is fantastic and i go buy a sheet of lexan and then i i cut it up and i don't know if a, a lot of guys know this or do this but i take one of those um one of those retainers for a hood um liner you know, it's the, the big ones, like on the Chevys that had the Christmas tree on the back. And I simply drill a hole in my window protector and I push that through. And Oh, did we lose him? We lost him. <laughs> He's frozen on the screen. He's frozen. I can see him. Oh, man. Uh, can I finish what he was going to say? Though? Yeah, I know go, what he was go, getting go ready ahead. To say, yeah. Go ahead. Basically, you thread it through there, and it makes it to where it won't fall down into the window. So if you could imagine that clip, I bet he's, uh, yeah, he's totally disappeared on us there. Looks like he's trying um, to get back in. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, up, oh, I don't know where he's at. Dude. You know, quickly, Mike, I want to tell you something, though, why he was talking about that. I actually take a rope and put it through mine, like I drill the same hole, and I tie like a little rope in there, and I actually run it out and drill a hole through my um, window wedge and tie the other end of my window wedge so that way if it ever did fall down into the door then you would be able to kind of just fish it out with your uh, well that's that's how my window wedge that's how my stepdad did he had everyone he had the mercedes wedges 
the black ones back in the mm-hmm. day. And he did he did a rope like two had two of them and put put them together. I just you know that's how he did it all the time back in the day. Right. So right. really right. good right. wedges. Um, if anybody can get get their fingers on those plastic Mercedes wedges, they're the best wedges I've ever seen in my entire career. But they're expensive. They're like a hundred bucks a piece or something. So, all right, John, we're gonna wrap it up, man. Yes, sir. Um, hey, Mike, gonna... before we wrap it up, buddy, can we mention real quick? Um, we do right at this moment. What is today? Today is the thirteenth. And currently, we still have the $179 sale on DentTrainer.com for six months. Uh, So that's a six-month package for $179. And I just want to let everybody know out there that um, this auto-renews. It's normally $279, and it will auto-renew for life at $179 every six months. So a lot of guys are taking advantage of it. We really haven't publicized it. We've just kind of um, put it on there, and whoever stumbles into it, uh, you know, gets gets that opportunity. And we've sold a ton of them, and uh, it's a great opportunity for any of you guys who are going back and forth. If you want to come on board, well, there you go. It's our gift to you. Oh, awesome, awesome, man! I, I'm telling you, it's a good package, and a lot of people have been jumping on that like crazy. So, um, but cool. That's a good wrap, John. Hey, we're gonna be out of here pretty soon. <laughs> I'm Mike Toledo, and this is John Hiley. Hey, and Daniel Grom unfortunately left us. <laughs> we'll see him next time on the next episode. Talk to you guys later. See ya.